By 2020, there will be six new public hospitals. It's part of the health ministry's plan to boost infrastructure to deal with the rise in demand for health care services. But with Singapore experiencing a bed crunch at current hospitals, are the ministry's plans on track to meet future health needs? In this week's Spotlight, Sarah Gross looks at how hospitals are planned. Construction of the new Ng Teng Fong General Hospital and the adjacent community hospital has been ongoing since 2009. The new General Hospital in Jurong is gearing up for its opening in December. Preparations include having numerous meetings on matters like patient management, infection control and on-site visits to overseas safety issues. The new hospital hopes to give patients an integrated healthcare experience, combining critical care services with the streamlining of bills. The successful smooth opening of a hospital actually require us not only to envision the big picture, now it's about getting into all the details, ensuring that uh, we, we, we take note of the specifics about the patient experience, the systems need to come out, the instruments need to be there. Over in Queenstown, about 2,000 nurses are being trained for the new hospital. Other than familiarising themselves with the hospital's new systems, nurses will also be trained to deal with cases specific to the Ng Teng Fong Hospital. Being in the centre of an uh, industrial area, uh, we have a lot of factories and uh, shipyards. So we expect that to see a certain type of problems more, while in the NTF example we may see a lot of road traffic accident patients or industrial accident patients. And therefore we are gearing up our nurses training to be able to handle more complex cases. Ng Teng Fong General Hospital has set aside about 6 to 12 percent of its hospital space to cope with possible surges in demand. Now, these white spaces are typically non clinical areas used for administration work, for example. Now, in the event of an emergency, these white spaces can be converted for extra bed space or operating rooms. In Singapore, healthcare infrastructure has been ramped up to meet the demands of an aging population. There are currently six acute general hospitals in Singapore. Ng Teng Fong General Hospital will add 700 beds by the end of 2014. And the general and community hospitals in Seng Kang in 2018 will add about 1,400 beds. Between 2020 and 2030, the government plans to build four new acute hospitals with Woodlands as a possible site. The Health Ministry says the entire planning process of conceptualising a new hospital to its opening could take an estimated 8 to 10 years, depending on the size and complexity of the development. The Ministry works with agencies such as URA to select the appropriate site. Now, the eventual size and capacity of the proposed hospital development is finalised after factors such as demographics and site accessibility is taken into consideration. But some have raised concerns about how hospitals are planned, especially when the beginning of 2014 saw bed occupancy rates at some public hospitals rise above 90%. When it happens so frequently, then it's no longer it's a, a, a glitch, it's a new norm, right? So the question is, what happened in, 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 in the planning state, the master plans for hospital beds, let's say five to ten years ago? Health economist Pua Kai Hong says it comes down to demand and supply. While the total number of hospital beds has kept pace with population growth, he says the growth of the elderly population is not being responded to. The hospital bed supply has been growing at about 1% uh, a year for the last 10 years. But if you actually look at the population demand in terms of uh, ageing of the population, baby boomers were going to be retiring from 2010 onwards. So we see that start of that silver tsunami, you know, uh, retiring now. So along with the re retired population, you will expect lots more chronic degenerative conditions. Not everyone agrees, though, that the bed crunch was due to a lack of proper planning. Rather, it is the area of home care which needs to be looked into. The truth of the matter is that, you know, it's quite difficult to plan the bed a situation as well as the requirements to pinpoint accuracy. There needs to be a, a support system 
to support both the caregivers as well as the patient. Several hospitals have started transitional care services to provide such support. 80-year-old Madam Lim spent three weeks at Kutek Quat Hospital after having a stroke. When she was released, a doctor and nurse visited her at home for three months. Her caregiver was also trained on how to take care of her. It makes a difference because um, there are some very basic care which we can actually provide you know, to, to the patient. It's not necessary that every time there's something and then take out the, the phone and call 995. You know. Sometimes we just have to discern you know, what to do. In the short term, the health ministry is planning to tap spare capacity in the private sector. It currently has 50 beds from private hospitals. Piling work on the upcoming Sengkang General Hospital and Community Hospital is about halfway through. The 1,400-bed integrated hospital will include 200 swing beds for either acute care or intermediate wards. These bed numbers are arrived at by calculating the projected uh, population needs in the northeast. This is based on the current uh, utilization of hospital beds from the citizens around the area, projected to grow in the future to 2025 and 2030 to close to a million population. These are very young families with young children, so the services that we plan uh, will be geared towards their needs. While the hospital's building is on track, experts say its opening cannot be rushed. One of the biggest challenges it faces is recruiting 5,000 staff. Dr. Chia Shi Lu has been involved in the medical manpower planning for the hospital since 2010. He says hiring senior doctors will be the toughest part for the hospital that will open in 2018. Sometimes it's very difficult to commit uh, doctors six or seven years down the road because you know some of them may want to retire, they might want to branch off into other aspects of, uh, of, of hospital work. The overall sentiment is that a hospital-centric system is not the most optimal way to meet the needs of an ageing population. Rather, the model of healthcare has to evolve so that more is built up in the primary care sector. It's hoped that such efforts, along with the planned increase in bed capacity, will allow future healthcare needs to be better met.